Welcome to this legislative update for the 2022 short session of the North Carolina General Assembly. Public Schools First NC is a statewide advocacy organization working to educate and inform North Carolinians about critical public education issues that affect our schools, teachers, and students, and to engage all stakeholders in supporting one unified system of high quality public education. In this program, we'll review education funding and rankings, provide an overview of the short session that began on May 18th, and review highlights of the governor's proposed budget. At the end of this program, we'll provide a brief review and outlook for the Leandro court case. North Carolina education funding is largely provided by the state. Members of the General Assembly ultimately decide the amount of money allocated to North Carolina public schools. About 24% comes from local county governments through local tax dollars. About 10% comes from federal funds. North Carolina ranks 49th in what's called funding effort. Funding effort is a state's investment in public education compared to its GDP. According to the most recent report from the National Association of Educators, North Carolina ranks 39th in per pupil spending and 38th in teacher pay. North Carolina has the nation's lowest corporate tax rate at 2.5%. These are taxes paid by large businesses and corporations. Over the last decade, state lawmakers have slashed this tax rate from 6.9% in 2013 to the current 2.5%. In the most recent state budget passed in November 2021, state lawmakers are eliminating this corporate tax rate. It will fall from 2.5% to 2.25% in 2025, and then drop to 0% by the end of this decade. This means funding of public goods and services, such as public schools, will be pushed onto individual taxpayers through county property taxes and taxes on goods and services. We firmly believe that corporations should pay their fair share and that this elimination of the corporate tax rate is wrong. The most recent state budget also included a 5% average pay increase for teachers, teacher bonuses, a 5% pay increase for principals, $360 million in federal COVID relief funds, and $30 million new dollars for private school vouchers, known as North Carolina's Opportunity Scholarship Program. The value of a school voucher is now equal to about 90% of our per pupil expenditure, meaning a single voucher is worth about $5,850. And the income eligibility was expanded to allow families making up to $85,000 per year to get a voucher for private school tuition. This expansion in eligibility means a majority of North Carolina families now qualify. When lawmakers first passed the Opportunity Scholarship Program, they claimed it was only for low-income students. As many predicted, the intent all along was to ensure nearly anyone of any income level in North Carolina could get taxpayer money to attend private school. The budget also included $100 million for most North Carolina counties to provide pay supplements for teachers. However, five counties were excluded from receiving these funds. Wake, Charlotte-Mecklenburg, Guilford, Buncombe, and Durham. These five counties must provide teacher pay supplements through local tax dollars. The 2022 short session of the North Carolina General Assembly began on May 18th. What can be considered during the short session? Lawmakers can introduce bills related to the current state budget. 
They can also reintroduce any bill that passed at least one chamber during the long session. Bills that were vetoed by Governor Cooper during the long session can also be reconsidered. Here are two examples of education bills that could be reconsidered in this short session. House Bill 755 would require schools to report what materials and activities are being used in classrooms. These items would be open to public review and scrutiny. House Bill 755 passed the House during the long session, but was not taken up in the Senate. As of this recording, this bill was being heard in a new House Education Committee that we will review on an upcoming slide. House Bill 324 was vetoed by the governor. The original version read in part, an act to demonstrate the General Assembly's intent that students, teachers, administrators, and other school employees recognize the equality and rights of all persons and to prohibit public school units from promoting certain concepts that are contrary to that intent. Following trends in other states, some North Carolina lawmakers are targeting critical race theory with bills such as this. While CRT is not taught in K-12 schools, it has become the term to describe the teaching of black history and other hard truths about American history. Other legislation we're concerned about is North Carolina following in Florida's footsteps. The North Carolina Senate will consider proposed legislation that would require schools to tell parents if their children want to change their pronouns or seek counseling and would ban teaching about sexual orientation and gender identity in K-3 classrooms. This bill would allow parents to challenge schools or school districts in court to get information if they are not satisfied with responses to their questions. As mentioned, there is a new House Select Committee tasked with reimagining K-12 education in North Carolina. Called the House Select Committee on Education System for North Carolina's Future and led by Representative John Torbett of Gaston County, the committee has met about twice per month and has held public meetings in a few counties around the state. Critics argue that rather than spending time and resources on such a committee, the legislature only need look to the Leandro Comprehensive Plan to provide students, teachers, and schools with the tools they need to be successful and improve student outcomes. This is a screenshot of the committee's page. Here, you can sign up to receive meeting notices by email. Click the link located to the right of the subscribe heading. Governor Cooper recently released his budget proposal. The House and Senate will consider his proposal and release budgets of their own. As of this recording, neither the House nor Senate has released their budgets. Let's review items in the governor's budget. The governor's budget includes $70 million for instructional support positions, such as school counselors, school psychologists, school social workers, and school nurses. $57 million for students with disabilities, $20 million for English language learners, and $500 million for school construction. These funds would be distributed among all of North Carolina's school districts. The governor's budget also includes an average 2.5% pay raise for teachers and retention bonuses for teachers and other school-based employees, such as child nutri nutrition workers and bus drivers. The governor proposes $75 million for local teacher supplements. Unlike the state budget, Governor Cooper's proposal does not, does not exclude North Carolina's five largest counties from receiving these funds. In response to a growing teacher shortage, the governor proposes $4.7 million to expand the Teaching Fellows Program. The governor's budget includes the following investments in pre-K. 
$41.9 million for the North Carolina Pre-K Program, $10.25 million for Early Intervention Services, $10 million for Smart Start, and a 2.5% pay increase for early childhood teachers. Preschool and early childcare workers often make well below a living wage, sometimes as low as eight to $10 per hour. North Carolina is in strong economic shape. Despite significant inflation and concerns of a coming recession, North Carolina is expected to have $6 billion in surplus by the end of 2023. We hope state lawmakers will consider this as they make public education funding decisions. On the minds of public education advocates is the Leandro court case and what will happen with Leandro in the short session. We'll review what happened with this case in 2021, what the current state budget included, what the governor's budget proposal includes, and what's next for this critical court case. Here's a brief re review of recent Leandro news. In November 2021, in a two to one vote, the North Carolina Court of Appeals threw out an order from Judge Lee, ordering state officials to transfer $1.7 billion from reserve funds to comply with Leandro. In a shocking twist, Judge Lee was dismissed from the case earlier this year. Lee was dismissed by Supreme Court Justice Paul Newby and Newby appointed Judge Michael Robinson as the new judge overseeing the Leandro case. Judge Robinson recently determined that the most recent state budget did not fund more than $700 million of years two and three of the Leandro plan. The state budget that passed in November and signed by the governor only funded about 50% of the Leandro comprehensive plan. It remains to be seen if state lawmakers will increase funding for Leandro, but the governor's proposed budget fully funds year three of that plan. This chart shows the Leandro need versus what was funded in the 2021-2023 state budget. Note the comparisons between the different categories. Pay increases were funded at 80 and 74%, while pre-K and early childhood education was funded at just 17%. Education advocates say the Leandro Comprehensive Plan is not a menu of items to pick and choose from. The Leandro Plan must be fully funded. So what's next for Leandro? As stated before, it remains to be seen how much Leandro funding will come out of the short session. Advocates that care about this issue and want Leandro fully funded must continue to reach out to state lawmakers. We must also vote. As the 2022 elections near, learn where your state legislative candidates stand on fully funding Leandro. Do they support full funding or not? Remember that judges matter in cases like this and state Supreme Court justices can have tremendous impact on how this case moves forward. Be an informed education voter and get out and vote in November, 2022. This program is available on the Public Schools First YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel and find many more videos on a wide range of education topics. We have hosted state lawmakers, North Carolina public school teachers, and even Governor Cooper on previous programs. You can find all of these recordings here on this page. Thank you for watching this legislative update. Please find us on social media and like our pages and, and our content. We invite you to subscribe to our newsletter where you will receive weekly updates on the 2022 short session, as well as other important education news. You can reach us by email at info 
at publicschoolsfirstnc.org. We welcome your questions and comments. Finally, please visit our website for fact sheets, resources, our advocacy toolkit, and events. Thank you for watching and for your advocacy on behalf of North Carolina's public schools.